So, uh, today we are gonna go ahead with some Reddit things. Today I learned three cows that were swept off an island in North Carolina during Hurricane Dorian were found alive on a different island. Cape Lookout National Sheepshore Park officials say they believe the three stranded cows swam up to five miles. Which is insane. Which really is insane. So, uh, yeah, with this we gotta start the, <laughs> the episode, I guess. Um, if, you act, what, if your act of vandalism is pretty enough, it'll be considered street art. Well, yeah, indeed. And, and I don't know, like it is... No, 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 no. I do... Well, hmm. it is difficult to say since you're saying like, well, uh, yeah, vandalism is art. Quite. But no, vandalism is vandalism. Art is art. I mean, uh, considering law and shit, it might be considered um, vandalism. But, um, but yeah, but yeah, no. But yeah, you know, um, it's not vandalism. Art is art, vandalism is vandalism. You know, there's, I do just really want to, yeah, I do really want to dis, uh, di differentiate here because I don't believe in this. Let's support one and another here. Do one thing you've been putting... Well, yeah, okay, never mind. You know, the whole like, okay, I want to have a... Uh, what do they call them? Um, somebody that helps you to just keep doing things like... Yeah, I mean, I get it. And yeah, it can help. And yeah, if it is helping, then it is a pretty cool thing. But, but I don't know. What if your buddy doesn't have some time? What if whatever? Um, I don't know. I am a big fan of just doing some things with with, with what you have. Um, whether it is about some materialistic shit, you know, just podcasting or whatever you want to talk about. Or um, or something like this. I don't know. Like, just do it on yourself. Like, you don't have to have a... I, I would like to just use the word, but I just don't know it. <laughs> anyway, recommendations for a book by the sea, but not in the summer. But not as I love the seaside. I love the endless sea. It, uh, it's loud tides in the evenings. I love walking on the beach and I love the smell of fish. Markets weird enough. But I love all this in late autumn or winter when I can be dressed in a big sweater, holding a thermos with hot tea while walking on the beach or promenade. By the way, I do think that I'm not going to stay in the place that I am at this point in time. Um, I love summer. I love summer so much. We're having summer this point of time. And yes, I'm sitting in my fucking hut and I'm recording. Yeah. Uh, no, but I'm going to enjoy the sun today as well a bit. And um, I love it. I, lo I love riding my bike around. I love just being on a promenade. We have one as well, even though there is no sea and, uh, and stuff like that. Like it is amazing. I just totally enjoy that. But winters are fucking fucked. I don't want to have a, I don't want to have such a winter. And I just can't do something about it. I don't want to have this winter. So uh, I've really got to have to figure out where I want to live, you know, because being in the southern part of whatever, I don't know if this is going to make me happy either. I know winter is still going to be just less warm, I guess, at least. And I don't even know if I just, if I am going to like the summer as it is, if I'm just having summer all the time. But I don't know. I just really deeply like it. Um... I actually think about Italy. I don't know. Like I, I don't speak Italian that well. Really not that well. But, but I kind of think like, well, if I'm having a job that allows me to just work wherever I am, this would be amazing. Would be insane. Um, so, but maybe even in France, southern France could also be nice. I don't know. Maybe just Spain. Maybe Portugal. Like I think there is just many. Uh, areas that are beautiful but but i don't know i just i love the the italian flair i guess you know the italian vibe and you know not necessarily the lifestyle i guess but just maybe i'm just also kind of uh, connecting italy to vacation since we are quite oh we have been uh back in the days where i've also just been going on vacations with my family this point of time i'm not doing this any longer uh we've quite always been in italy and then it's been fucking great I mean, maybe this is because of that. Maybe this is my connection. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's, uh, it's difficult to say. But if I know more about my plans, if I know more about things, then I am definitely going to just, um, yeah, share it with you. Because why not?
because why not? It's amazing. Um, it really indeed is, is, is amazing. We gotta have to check something really quickly. Uh, yeah, anyway. Let's move on. Um, I'm 18 year old and just published my first mobile app looking for feedback. The app is called Virtual Minds. It's way too of a difficult name. And it is a more efficient take on guided meditation designed for students and busy professionals. Rather than scrolling through options and navigating so, uh, curriculums, the app uses an algorithm that takes preferences into account and stitches together meditations to deliver an effective session. Sounds good, but I don't like the name. Who's going to read this shit? I don't know how much of my story is solid memory in my mind anymore and I jump around a lot. So I'm sorry. It's hard to get together my thoughts a lot of the time lately. To put my youth in a short description, since I was very young, my dad has had a job that has caused me to move around a lot. Not like locally or even my home country, mostly through Europe with or without my mother or sometimes just him going away for four to eight months of the year. Not to say that this was inherently negative and on my youth, looking back on the days I of living in very beautiful and different places gave me a more worldly view of, the, of things and exposed me uh, to a lot of young age, uh, what, allowing me to develop my own perspective growing up in a world where I felt pretty distant and disconnected. It's actually pretty long, but I kind of feel like going through it. I don't know why. Um... At a later age, not 100% sure what year exactly, but somewhere around 8, I learned I had been adopted and pretty much, and pretty much, what? At pretty much birth and I didn't know nor have anything to go off about my bio mother or father, other than some photos and a brief uh, watered down explanation. I feel like since around that time I had a lot of un rest in my home mostly when my dad was working and that took a sharp incline and continued until I was about 13. At that point I had started to seriously take away from my own life with pretty much anything I could. I smoked, I drank and I hung around some pretty shady people who didn't care much about my age or my problems. I kept living like that until my parents decided they had enough and sent me to a semi-okay rehab facility in the northern area of where I am from just around December the 2nd-ish. I was 14 going on 15 now in this place with people mostly 2 to 3 year older than me and stayed there for a number of months and a Christmas and a Christmas and a New Year's without anything from family from a family other than an email per month that was read during these therapy sessions I was pretty discouraged at this point and honestly don't remember a lot of that time in my life Still, uh, some ment mentality as I had when I was younger. Very angry at the world without anywhere to direct that energy and nowhere to really pin it. Fast forward to my exit of that stint. I was back in my sort of hometown where I spent the most time in my life. Same people around and the same ideas in my head of escaping my reality. Things hit a lot harder when I was back. Everything was a little out of control or out of touch in my own head. And I was having a lot more trouble at home and uh, with my friends. It took a more sharp turn with a series of larger fights at my house. And then I was out of uh, out on the streets and uh, on and off for a year and back at home for a month or two before a pretty massive fallout that led to a much longer time homeless and many experiences in that time bouncing mostly around the western part of Canada in tents and couch surfing. At the end of that time, roughly uh, the one and one and a half year had passed and I was around 17. My parents interventioned me at a lunch, seeing them for the first time in a very long time and not hearing a word out of their mouths only from this lady telling me it was, uh, it was homelessness forever or another stint in treatment was a pretty big breaking point of, uh, for me mentally, I think. When I say I think, I mean uh, it... Uh, pretty literally my gosh of mental pleasure uh, pressure i'm sorry and hurt is very off at the time i was being intervened i also found myself in a very interesting and challenging relationship that made me want to stay out and on the street almost without question nonetheless i chose treatment and to try and stay in contact with my girlfriend at a time this was uh this went pretty well in an in all honesty i don't do well with confinement or any of that daily and a meetings and stronger peer group that supported you in a house with 12 guys who all kinds of acted like bros and just wanted to see you great see you get with your family again changed my outlook on how things needed uh, to look in my life but i still hadn't addressed 
a lot of things my brain feels like uh, issues, I guess. Coming back from that center, I was pretty happy and excited to see my girlfriend and my family, but my family still wasn't ready for me to move in, understandably, so, but this meant another year of finding my own way at not quite 18. I moved into a house with my girlfriend at the time, who is being with through treatment that also had another family of a mother and her older daughter, 24, and younger son. The daughter worked with with my 18-year-old girlfriend at the time. The house wasn't awful, but was very messy, and they are often using meth and the other, and the mother worked for a drug line, and that meant me often taking care of the younger boy who uh, can, what, who can call Christ for the sake of this. Uh, pretty fucked up story, man. Let's actually zoom in a little bit because I don't want to get fucked up. Uh, I'm sorry. There were some of the, uh, these were some of the better times in the past few years as someone who grew up without too many friends and without a sibling that uh, I had any personal relationship or even knew I felt pretty humbled and thankful helping this kid stay sane in a house where his parents didn't take much time out of their day to help him out. As time went on, things went on, things at that house deteriorated as the mother was under some kind of investigation by SS, and without much work other than under the table garbage truck shifts, I was struggling to help out with anything around uh, there and couldn't keep up with the uh, pace of their lifestyles. I ended up getting in touch with my family again and moved in with my girlfriend at the time to their house, which in hindsight was a very tough time, trying to find myself after the time I'd spent away from my family and rebuilding that relationship along with trying to make my romantic life function was a lot for me. I struggle a lot with building relationships and suffer from very deep fear of losing people as much that I feel reject uh, people off the bat and often won't engage uh, people in depth unless I have a pretty solid and deep relationship pre-existing. This leads to another decline in my mental health and thus forth the demise of that relationship uh, with that girl in probably one of the worst days of my life. A large verbal fight with a lot of yelling and eventually the cops arriving after we had split up split it up and went out of ways and a domestic dispute complaint at 18. Uh, this began a very troubling pattern of still uh, talking to the girl after she messaged me a lot uh a lot of times, even though there was a contact put in place for us to keep the peace, I chose to answer her and continue trying to uh, to piece that back together with my real life on a back burner for quite some time. Now we are at the present and I'm out of that relationship again and sitting on my couch, packing a bong rip, typing this out for whatever fucking reason and realizing it's the first time I've said and not had to lie through my teeth to finish writing or saying something is so fucking long. Anyways, to the people that never read any of this, stay gold and don't ever think uh, for a second life isn't worth it because no matter the struggle, no matter the problem, things can change. I'm on the journey also and likely will be for some time. I really do hope for some, for everyone struggling in any form in this day and in, 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 in age the absolute best. And I wish I knew how to help myself and others more truly. There's actually no, I'm actually gone up with this. Um, and I'm gonna also comment like, well, I've read it, motherfucker, and I've also recorded it in my fucking podcast. Um, yeah, crazy fucking story, and I hope that that it first of all shows that yes, things can. Uh, and I've just really read it in a in a bad way, and I'm very sorry for that. Um, but uh, but I don't know, like just have a look at your life and see how good you're having it. Just think about that, and also view it as a way to just uh, stay away from certain things and maybe also certain people and certain uh, certain stuff. And yeah, this is the overall message of uh, this episode, I guess. And, and yeah, I wish you the best health of happiness and all success and also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy and basically means just being a nice person and then being remembered as a nice person, which is a cool thing. This is the fourth episode, so sorry for just making everything a little bit faster than normally. But uh, yeah. Three other questions that I have for you as well are why are you here? What are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea, which is a pretty fucking cool thing. So keep that in mind. The last question that I have for you is what could you specifically say to another person that is going to change their life 
and kind of change how they view their life and all sorts of things. Because I believe we all can do something. So yeah, before I lose my voice, I'll see you later, alligator. And uh, bye-bye.